Welcome to Toronto, Ontario, home of the uniquely talented artist Nick Denbo, otherwise known as Smearballs. There's a good chance you've seen his work showcased in pieces for Dead Mouse, KFC, Old Spice, Conan O'Brien, Flying Lotus, and his strangely distinct passion projects. I can't talk to camera for shit, so let's fast forward through these and meet up with our subject now. Hey John, how's it going, man? Yeah, good to see you, buddy. Come on in. Alrighty. A buddy of mine owned it back in the day, and he just like left it abandoned for like 20 years, and then I picked it up and gave it a polish. This is kind of my makeshift, low budge shooting space. Uh, sometimes I'll go rent a proper soundstage and whatnot, but if I can figure, if we're not doing like full body, multiple people or whatever, I'll knock shit out here. Mariner 1989 75 horse motor that I salvaged from my boat that sank at Ontario Place last summer. I was shooting a show for Adult Swim in New York and I get this phone call and they're like, oh, your fucking boat sank. <laughs> it was just like, what? Left the show early, like came and I was like, what the fuck? They showed me the security footage. There's my boat, totally bobbing around, fine. And then the camera moves because like some other guys do some suspicious behavior on another boat. And then it moves back in the morning at 9 a.m. and my, my boat's gone. I saw the motor, pulled it out, filled the, the cylinders with oil right away, brought it to a guy. He like dried out the electrical. It still works, so might get a new boat next. I've got the ultimate man cave thing. I've got a urinal in the closet here. Total fucking hyper man cave. Here's the music room jam space. I get the most out of a project when I get to do the music, when I get to do some 3D, when I get to do 2D, when I get to edit it. If I have control over all the different things, then it's like the strongest kind of piece a lot of the time. Like I did this thing for Old Spice. They just gave me like a bunch of commercials, said do whatever you want, mix it all up and, and go crazy with it with doing the music and everything. And that's one of my favorite jobs that I've ever done because it was like I had full control of every single aspect of it and it was just super fun to do that. Wow. Let's go upstairs. So yeah, this is my workspace where I sit all day, every day. I've got, uh, you know, seven million megapixels of uh, screen space to get myself a suntan. I lucked out back in the day. I got this place super cheap and I, I took a big gamble. I had no money. I totally, like, I had this old boat that I bought with like the last five grand I had to my name and it was like living in this shitty boat <laughs> and actually there's a picture of it in here. It was called the glass skipper and I took the G and the L off so it's like the ass skipper. That's how I sold it too. Some guy actually bought it. <laughs> so I sold it for a decent profit and then I used that down payment to buy this place and then I moved in here where there was no water, no sewer, no nothing and I was like a hobo living in this place with broken windows. It was kind of fucked up, actually. So then over the years, I renovated this thing and got it normal, put in some toilets. You're a bit of a renaissance man. Yeah, I guess. I guess they would, they would call you, right? Yeah, I guess yeah. They, they would. And I wouldn't talk to those people after that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Did a big job for uh, the Ken Block. He was like a founder of DC Shoes, and now he's like crazy race car driver, does all those Jim Connor videos where he's like driving his car sideways through a bay door into a warehouse and all the crazy donuts and shit. He's a pro rally car driver too, but he emailed me out of the blue. I'm like, who the fuck's Ken Block? And I'm like, this guy like, oh, was one of the founders of DC Shoes. And he's like, hey, can you remix this, uh, you know, Jim Connor video, his car driving video? So, fuck. Yeah, for sure, man. So <laughs> he started like messing with it. Hey, give me a Kia Paso with uh, a side of roast beef curtains. <laughs> he was gonna pay me on the side, be like, hey, release this on your own channel, make it look like you did it for fun. But then he decided, whoa, this is crazy. I'm gonna put it on the official DC channel. They made an official release out of it. So that was kind of cool. And that sprung uh, all kinds of other work. And... Do you know Mondo Media? They did Happy Tree Friends, a, a cartoon back in the day. <laughs> producers there I saw uh, the remix I made of The View. So I pitched them a news kind of remix show where every week I would just kick out, take the, you know, week's news and ram it into a little one or two minute song. And I did 12 episodes of that. 
And the executive producer at Team Coco, this guy named John Wooden, saw it, and he just emailed me out of the blue. I remember being, I went sailing with my buddy on his boat, and I get this, like, email, and I was like, hey, uh, greetings from Team Coco. Do you want to pitch us some shit? And I was like, well, fuck, yes, of course I do. So I came home, and that night I did this uh, green screen thing where I just uh, put myself on Brad Pitt for that Chanel number 5 ad that he did that was all, like, hoity-toity. World turns and we turn this out. Plans disappear. Dreams take over. Wherever I go. That night he like showed it to Conan and Conan was like, I love it. And they put it on the air like right away. So it was like next day turnover, first video on Conan. And that led into just doing piece work for them for a while. So I would just, because I had that in, I just started like making pop culture shit and sending it to them. And I started just getting stuff on the air pretty regularly. So that turned into like a retainer gig where they just bought me out for the year and I just worked sending as many videos as I could. I did the chicken egg with my pal Davey Force and we met on like early YouTube days because I saw his name on the titles of Tim and Eric and I'm like, who's this guy? Davey, Davey Force, he did the titles for Tim and Eric. I was working for, for Conan still we pitched them this thing where we would take a, because they were like a Warner Brothers subsidiary, so we thought we'd go through the Warner Brothers library and pick old films and make a TV show where each film, uh, each episode was a film shrunken down into 22 minutes where we just give it a whole new narrative. So that was our pilot project for Warner Brothers. So we did this whole, you know, thing where we sat here and watched The Shining a bazillion times. We started messing around with stuff, came up with this fast food angle. Here's Johnny. Charming Chicken World and Restaurant Resort is going completely insane. And it turned into the chickening. And yeah, we jammed on that for a couple months until we had enough to kind of cut a trailer. Kenny Hotz from Kenny vs. Spenny. Actually, we, we both worked on that show. Kenny like leaked it out, emailed it to like 85 people or something in his email list because he, you know, he was in it and was like, oh, he's gonna throw it out there. And I was like fucking super pissed at him. I'm like, dude, you fucking emailed this out to people? But he, one of the guys he emailed it out to was this guy Colin Geddes from, uh, he picked the films in Midnight Madness at the Toronto International Film Festival and decided to put it in the program, like the first short film in like a decade or something to go in with the features at Midnight Madness, which is like the coolest slot in TIFF. And he's, yeah, and from there it just went kaboom, went into Sundance, got all over the place. It's been in, I still get film festivals asking for it. It's been in probably 70 something film festivals or something crazy. Join me now for a journey into the comfort zone. This was intended to be a kind of an infomercial block on late night television. I don't think they ever got a media buy for it at the end, so it just lived on the internet, but it was intended to, to actually be like a long infomercial, calming, zen thing about chicken pies, <laughs> like a, a, a meditation system. It was 35 minutes of content like that we had to make in two weeks. Just kind of called as many people as I could who could help out, and uh, we slammed it together. Visualize the deeper world beneath the crust. crust. Imagine the peas. My buddy Fez, he's like a VJ dude who does a lot of uh, Resolum mixing. So we just gave him tons of like stuff with Alpha. Like we did some green screen stuff with the kernel rotating with the pie head and I gave him sporks and whatever, whatever stuff we kicked out in Cinema 4D to use as assets in the main video, I gave him. And then he took those videos with Alpha and just did like psychedelic shit in Resolume and, and kicked out, I think like three hours of content. My buddy Brian was dead mouses VJ for a while and was working at his house and, and they called me up out of the blue one day and we're like, hey, come on over and we'll, let's work on some tour visuals because he had this, the big show Veld here in Toronto coming up. I, I showed up and there was like a pool party going on in the backyard, all these tons of people. And I'm just looking around, I'm like, where's Joel? And they're like, point inside, and he's literally like pale, no, no suntan at all, sitting at his computer by himself. Kind of like what the video is, right? Like he's sitting at his computer, there's this chaos going on around. Not that the actual pool party was anything like that, but you know, you know what I mean? 
So I did that video over the course of, a, of like probably eight, nine months or something like that, but not like straight. I first tackled that intro shot, which was I think almost three weeks or something like that, just on that intro shot. And then I'd put it down because at the time I had no deal with him for money or anything. I was just doing it for fun. I was like, oh, I just went and shot this video with him. We were just going to kick it together. <laughs> So then I just kind of kept putting it on the back burner every time I got a job. So I would get a gig and I'd go do that and then I'd come back to it. That's probably why it's all like all over the place because I was just chipping away. <laughs> Try to make it interesting real or you kind of want to project your own image as to what you want to get hired for. My old reel before that didn't have many, much advertising work and I kind of want to go in that zone a little more just because money's better and it's like you can focus on a shorter length video and do something really cool rather than like spending eight months working on a longer project for probably less money than you know doing a bunch of shorter projects so i kind of wanted to gear up towards doing more advertising stuff or just more and more 3d stuff so after you you know learn a bunch of new skills for like three years and your old reel doesn't have any of it in it i felt the need to kind of kick something new out it would be so much fun just take a year off and actually pull off a feature film because very few people actually you know, self-produce something like that. And I think it's something that I could do in a year with spending some money of my own money and get, hiring some friends to help out and, you know, get some actors and do the uh, full feature length chickening style thing and run it through the film festivals and not even make any money. It's just like another calling card. It's just like, get more work out of it later because you made this crazy thing, just like the chickening did. It was great. I have no regrets spending months on that for no money, you know, it was, it's, it's a great thing to do once in a while. And I, th I find it really important to do those projects, not for money, not beholden to anyone, because that's when you do the experimentation. That's where you break new ground. That's where you do crazy shit because no one can tell you not to. And if I do that once every few years, I'm, I'm happy. That keeps me happy. That's disturbing. Anything you want to like wrap it up with? That's like a closer. Do we have a closer? No, I, have, I don't have a closer. No. Thanks for uh, picking it up, Okay, sure. Right yeah, we're yeah, just gonna, you got anything else you wanna ask me? It's been really tired. We'll, uh, <laughs> we'll overlay some bullshit footage of you pretending to work Yeah, can we do close-ups of my mess hand? Thus concludes my day with Nick. If you've enjoyed this video, please share it so I'm able to continue producing more interesting content. I hope my voice wasn't too Canadian for you. Bye for now.